Hello everyone! Uh, it's been a while since my last video uh, where I shared my testimony about how I came from the New Age movement to Jesus Christ. And lately I felt like God has put on my heart to share more about ayahuasca and uh, my point of view on that. I am by no means any expert on the subject. Uh, I can just share my experiences and what I have learned with the, during my walk with the Lord. So, uh, a good way to start is just explaining what ayahuasca is. If you are currently a new ager or you're just a curious person wondering what am I going to talk about. Uh, so, ayahuasca is, um, they call it like a wine uh, that the shamans uh, in the Amazonas jungle use um, for healing and different things. So a lot of people go to these rituals with ayahuasca because they are searching for healing, they are searching for their purpose in life. Um, many people have been cured from drug addictions and like traumas from their childhood and uh, anxiety, depression, yeah, so many things. And um, usually people have really like changed perspectives on life and yeah, so for a lot of people, they have really positive experiences trying ayahuasca. And uh, that's also what made me uh, go into this because I had some personal stuff that I was searching healing for. Um, and I also was curious about the meaning of life. I was curious about the spiritual realm and what it ha had to offer. And um, I also had a friend who had uh, experience getting uh, emotional healing uh, from ayahuasca because she had experienced some uh, serious trauma and um, bad things when she was younger. And she was not the only one. So it sounds pretty good, right? And so that's what made me go into it, into this. And uh, yeah, so my experience trying ayahuasca. So, I only did a two-day ceremony, so when you go into ayahuasca, uh, usually you will like lay on the floor, there is like mattresses there and you have a bucket if you have to puke and they usually like recommend you to puke because it's like this spiritual cleansing from inside. Uh, and usually like if you go to Peru and stuff like this, uh, you'll be on a retreat for probably like a week or even more. Uh, I went to a two-day retreat in Amsterdam and uh, because I just I wanted to go into the jungle and go like for a longer retreat but I just wanted to like try it out so this was like a two-day experience and I think I had like four so in the first day I had like two cups uh, or like shots of ayahuasca and then on the second day I, day, I also had two uh, shots of that because you can you can like choose if you want one or two during the because it's like if you want to go deeper into like the spiritual realm you will take one more so yeah so i did that two days and you set an intention before you try this and my intention was that i wanted god to heal my heart and i also wanted to know the truth and so my personal experience was that i ended up seeing uh, demons. I also could see stuff uh, that was like beneficial for healing like in my heart like I saw these things also uh, but I also saw demons and uh, but I didn't feel like scared when I saw them or anything like that but I was just like confused and so I had a lot of questions and my intention was going into ayahuasca to like find answers but it just made me have way more questions because I thought going into this, I would just like know why I was here, why we're living and all this stuff. But I was like, no, this doesn't make any sense. So I had like more questions. But uh, I think that, you know, God has everything under control and praise the Lord. Uh, I got saved after uh, a couple, I think it was like one month after or something, I got saved. And... Um, yeah, because I had been seeing testimonies of, of people coming from the New Age movement and they were talking about uh, ayahuasca and, and they were talking about like New Age stuff in general, like tarot cards, healing, uh, shamanism, all that, that it was demonic. And I've, I never heard that perspective on, 
this topic like in that way and it was like in the back of my mind but in the beginning like I didn't think much of it like when I saw demons and stuff like that because I didn't think that was like real uh, <laughs> so um, so that was that and uh, but you know I prayed and God revealed himself to me so now I have a whole different perspective on this topic that I want to share with you guys so the day I got saved it was like God was just like explaining so much stuff to me and uh, the first thing and I think this is like really beneficial to know as a new ager because like when you're in the new age movement you are like aware of a lot of shady stuff that goes around like in the world and like when it comes to religion and all this stuff and my personal perspective on religion before I got saved was that it was a control system uh, to like manipulate people and just keep people you know nice and being under control and stuff like that and keeping people away from knowing like their true self and like what they're like the spiritual power that we actually have uh, as an in individual in this world and um, but it was like God was like explaining to me that you know how people and God are two different things because if you go into a church or whatever and you look on how people uh, like behave and stuff a lot of people can be really guided by God and they are super godly and all that stuff but there can also be a lot of people who actually doesn't know God at all uh, but they can be like charismatic and all this stuff so people like believe them but then it's actually not following God by following those people because they are like deceived so it was like God just like explaining how it is so important that we have that individual responsibility to actually look up what the uh, what the Bible says about certain topics because it was like God was like well you need to focus on me and not on people because people would do mistakes all the time but God doesn't so whenever you're like confused or don't know what to do always go to god like you can uh, seek him in prayer and in the bible uh, because like say for myself like i was i had this mindset that i wanted to read the bible like once in my lifetime and i also want to read the quran and all these books uh but in my mind i had like this judgmental mindset that well you know it's it's manipulated and people have been like changing it and all this stuff and I was just like being judgmental without actually reading it for myself because when I started to read the Bible after I got saved I was like wow like why haven't I read this book before like it's amazing and it's all this like knowledge that I didn't even know about because I had this mindset so and maybe some of you who are currently in the new age will like know what I'm talking about when you know when you go to like deep spiritual stuff, you're in the new age and you believe in higher self and all that stuff and you have that like symbol who like looks looks like a cross but it has like that circle on top and then it's like this and it's the circle and that's like the, Egypt the Egyptians will have this symbol. And so, and I was thinking that well, you know, the Egyptians had a lot of spiritual knowledge and so before I got saved, I was thinking that you know going into the things that the Egyptians did that was like the answer because they had this higher knowledge and they did all this cool stuff and so I was searching into that and I didn't have any like knowledge from the Bible at this point so it just like made a lot of sense to me but when I started like when I got saved and God like revealed stuff when I started to read the Bible it was like wow I was like so deceived and I, I didn't even know about it and so yeah I wanted to like share like a couple Bible verses um, at the same time as I'm like trying to explain stuff to you guys um, so because I know that you know God's word is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword so it's power in the word of God and this is all about God that's why I want to share God's word with you guys. So if you read in Exodus uh, uh, chapter 7 verse 11, it says, Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, also did the same by their secret arts. And if you read in the same chapter, verse 22, it says, But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts, so Pharaoh's heart remained hardened. And he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. 
So what is this story about? Well, this was when Moses got the command by the Lord to go into Egypt and release uh, God's people. And Moses was like, well, how am I going to do that? Like, how are people going to believe that, you know, you are with me and you command me to do these things? And God was like, well, you can do these signs and wonders and then people will believe you. And so Moses did a lot of like miraculous things. Like he made the snake and yeah, he did a lot of different things. But as we can see, Pharaoh had sorcerers and witches who could perform the same miracles. So you have like, you can have the same miracles and stuff from both sides because from the one hand it was from god you know who performed this miracle and on the other hand it was from the devil because these uh sorcerers you know they didn't use god's power to perform these miracles he used the devil's um power to do that and so i even wanted to like look up like the definition uh of sorcery and the definition is the use of power gained from the assistance or control of evil spirit, especially from for divining and then says necromancy. And then you have the definition of witchcraft, the use of sorcery or magic, communication with the devil or a familiar spirit. And yeah, it's like even just looking into this like def definitions of these words, it's just like mind blowing to me. Because uh, I was into that and I didn't have any, like, I didn't have any idea, uh, like, that it was from the devil. Because going into New Age, when you go into ayahuasca and things like that, like, you get healing. It can, like, help you with traumas. It can help you with, like, diseases and all this stuff. And from my point of view at that time, it looks like something good, right? Because you get healing and you can like heal your mind from like traumas and all that stuff. And that looks pretty good to me. But what I didn't know uh, back then, but I know today, is that the devil can give you good things. The only thing that he actually cares about is just to keep you away from salvation. So if you've heard that Bible verse, it says, Because even the devil can mask himself as an angel of light. And just like looking at a lot of people's stories, you know, who have struggled with like psychosis and different things like that. They will like see angels and they will see like these beautiful, happy things. And then suddenly it will turn on them and it will become something dark and it will like tell them all this like bad stuff. And that is like the devil and the demons, like they can mask themselves as something positive. But it's still demons because they don't it says in the Bible that the devil only comes to kill steal and destroy and so the demons are the devil's helper so they also have the same agenda like they they don't care about you they don't care about your well-being but here's the deal so say a lot of people will like um, do things to get um, demonic powers so they will like sacrifice things like and uh, yeah like satanists you know they were like sacrifice stuff and all that to gain uh, power from the demonic realm and um, so yeah and these things work so when you do that it will actually help you but the only thing that they have on their agenda like you can get rich you can get prettier you can get more knowledge because that's a huge thing i feel like in new age like people are just ser searching for higher knowledge uh which in a lot of ways can be good but usually it's like used for um like selfish things but a lot of times people will want knowledge to heal people which can be good but they don't know that they're actually healing people with demonic powers which is actually not good so here's the deal the demons can give you all these things that the desires on your heart, you know? But they do this in order to keep you away from salvation. And where can you get salvation? Well, you can only get salvation through Jesus Christ. So, yeah, these things are super real, but it's not good for you. 
And so I wanted to read um, a Bible verse that I think is really good. And so I was super into astrology uh, when I was in New Age. And uh, yeah, like I loved astrology. Like I wanted to be an astrologer and I, yeah, from just like doing it by myself, I would say I had pretty good control on a lot of stuff in astrology. Um, and cause it was correct, you know, it was really good. But, and even after I got saved, I was like, well, is it okay for me to still do, like, be keeping doing astrology and stuff? But then I read, read this Bible verse and it changed my mind because I was like, well, no, I have to leave it. So this is in Isaiah 47 and we're going to start in verse 9. It says, Both these things shall come upon you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of, of your enchantments, like a lot of witchcraft. You felt secure in your wickedness. You said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray. And, and you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one beside me. Like, I just have to uh, have a break here because you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. So in new age, this is like the biggest deception because people were, will like tell you, well, no, you are your own God. And if you read in the Bible, like God will um, speak about himself as I am. And here it says, you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. So people, yeah, it just like stood out to me in this way. Like, I don't know if this is like the right interpretation but this is just what i got from reading it so there's no one besides me so this is actually like the biggest lie in the new age movement that people think that they are their own gods that it's just a matter you need to do more shadow work inside like if your experience is bad uh, things in your life it's just that it's things that you need to experience in order to become your higher self and it's just they just like make excuses for the devil to be in their life like it's it's so sad to think about because, and the reason why I say this is because I was one of them. So like, I'm not like judging you guys because I was there and I'm just trying to help out. Okay, so we're going to continue reading. Uh, but evil shall come upon you, which you cannot charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, which you will not be able to ward off. And ruin shall come on you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantment and your many sorceries with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed. Perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many consultations. And it's almost like God is just like making fun of them. It's like, well, you know, it's just a funny way of writing it. Let those who study the heavens stand up and save you. Those who gaze at the stars and at each new moon predict what shall befall you at each new moon. And that is like a huge thing in New Age. Like, oh, you have to uh, um, recharge your crystals during the full moon. It's, stuff like, it's like so funny to read about this in the Bible because it's like, it's still today. Like this was, like people did it back then, but people are like doing the exact same thing today. They sh uh, shall befall you. See, they are like stubble, the fire consumes them, they cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame, no coal for warming oneself is this, no fire to sit before. Such to you are those with whom you have labored, you have trafficked with you from your youth, they all wander about in their own path, there is no one to save you. So, and... So I think this is and the thing where it says like, let those who study the heavens stand up and save you, those who gaze at the stars. And a lot of like astrologers who would like help them out with different things, predicting stuff. And you will also see that today. Like it's a lot of business people who like use astrologers to like predict stuff that will happen in the future uh, when it comes to their business. And this is also something that is not new because if we look up, in Acts, and this is uh, chapter 16, and it's from verse uh, 16. Oh, yeah, so it's 16 16. Paul and Silas in prison. <clears throat> so, and here it says, 
One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had the spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned out and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. So the meaning of this uh, Bible verse is just like, so these people, they met this girl who helped her owners make money uh, by having help from demons, like using divination. So it's just that, because a lot of, in myself included, like I had this perspective that, well, you will know when there's something bad. Like I would know that uh, when I was dealing with dark spirits and light spirit, because I had this perspective that it was like a difference between dark and, and bad spirits. And of course I didn't want to like do anything bad. Uh, so I even had like the good witch book because I wanted to like do healing on people and all that stuff. But little did I, did I know that it was actually using demonic powers and not using things from God. So I feel like that is like a really important thing uh, when it comes to people who are in the new age uh, movement currently and i just have like the biggest heart because see for myself i come from like uh wrestling the wrestling community and uh, so i feel like in these types of sports and also like martial art in general it's like so many people who have like the biggest hearts for their passions because like say in wrestling you don't have you don't make money doing it and it's like super hard for your body and for your head and what whatnot and people have just like this biggest passion for what they are doing and i've seen a lot of people searching into um into like new age stuff to get like healing and help them with the purpose in life and all that stuff and i was one of them like i have the biggest heart for you guys because i know how it is and but know this, that the only, like Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Like nothing in this life matters. Like getting medals or money, be, buying houses, cars, being popular, uh, being like an influencer, having likes on Instagram, all that stuff. Like it doesn't matter. Like there's no value in these things. And the, the night I got saved, it was like God just like, explained to me that the reason why I like had that um, experience with God like I knew that I did not deserve it and I also knew that there was nothing I did that made me have that experience like not uh, being good in school or doing sports or nothing like this is free like salvation is free you don't have to do anything other than accept Christ as your Lord and Savior you know you need to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you know and with the heart uh, you believe and then with your mouth you confess um, so yeah and just imagine this like everything that we are actually like looking for in life because we are like searching for love and purpose in all these places that will actually just leave us empty but Jesus is just there like waiting for us and he's free like he's just waiting for your heart and you can just search him like you can be in your bathroom floor or at home it doesn't matter where you are because God is everywhere but know this that there's a difference between getting healing from God and getting healing from demons they can both do it but getting it from demons like it will turn on you one way or another like if it doesn't turn on you in this life it will in the life after we are finished here like when you die because you will end up in hell and i know this sounds like so brutal when i say this but it's true and i know like if you're not into like spiritual stuff like this video is probably gonna scare you maybe i don't know <laughs> but uh because i didn't believe in hell like i truly didn't i was like well no we're gonna be like 
reincarnated and I'm gonna be like a bird or a dog in my next life. Uh, <laughs> but no, that's not true. Like Jesus, when he says, I am the way, the truth and the life, that's actually the reality. And um, ayahuasca using, like ayahuasca is a demonic, feminine demonic spirit that will like help you heal. And it can do all these like good things for you, but it will turn on you. So my recommendation is not to go into ayahuasca. Stay away from that because it is demonic. So if you are currently in the new age movement uh, and you are like trying to figure out what I'm just been explaining to you guys, my biggest uh, advice would be, because it says in the Bible, always test the spirit to see if it is from God. Because a lot of things, because when the devil can mask himself as an angel of the light, like it's no wonder why we will be deceived so many times. And that's why we have the responsibility to test the spirit. So always test the spirit to see if that spirit also confesses that Jesus is the son of God and that God raised him from the dead and all that stuff. Like you can be safe that, okay, this is from God, but if not, know that it's demonic. Cause Jesus is the only one who died for our sins. Everyone is a sinner. I am a sinner. You are a sinner. Everyone in this world is sinners because it says in the Bible, the wages of death is sin. That's the reason why we actually have to die one day is because we have sinned against a holy and perfect God. And then a lot of people would say, well, if God is good and he's all these things, like why does so many bad things happen in this world? Well, guess what? Because we have free will and we are sinners. We have like an evil nature um, that goes against so many things that God wants us to do. And uh, yeah, and I know... Um, like for a lot of people b going into like spiritual work in new age can look a lot like receiving salvation because the devil is always trying to copy um what god does so you will have like ego death and you will have like all this spiritual work and you will come more like selfless and all these actually good fruits that it, like according to the bible is like good but the most important thing is still gone and that is Jesus, because when you are standing in front of your creator, it doesn't matter, like, um, if you are telling, well, I did all these good things and, and whatnot, uh, because if you are not perfect, according to God's standard, like, it will not help you. So, I will read in Galatians 5, um, 5 from 16, and this is the work of the flesh. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh des desires is opposite to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is op uh, opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, uh, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery. Uh, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrelers, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm sorry if I didn't uh, read that right. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But then it says in verse 22, By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Yeah, so this was in Galatians 5 from 16 till 26. I would recommend you read that because it's power in the word of God. So yeah, I hope this video wasn't like too long. And I've just really lately, God has just been putting on my heart to speak about this subject. And know that God actually loves you. That's why he sacrificed Jesus, you know, because he wanted us to have a way out of being bound to the law because everyone is in there and everyone's going to be judged by the law because nobody is perfect but guess what jesus willingly died on the cross 
for us to get away out of this curse and uh, seek him like he's the only one you need you can get healing you could get everything in jesus and he's free you don't have to pay someone in uh, south america or in amsterdam or whatever to get the healing you need because you can get everything for free in jesus and jesus you can access him from anywhere you can pray to him you can read the bible and uh yeah and god can use other people to reach you too so i just hope that this word encouraged you guys and please leave a comment if there's anything like more you want me to talk about and uh, yeah, I've been hesitating to like make videos because I'm like, well, it's not going to be good enough, but nothing is going to be good enough. And um, yeah, I just pray that this video will become a blessing to someone who's watching this. And if you're into New Age, know that I was there. I know a lot of things and feelings that you may have, but don't trust your feelings because feelings will deceive us all the time and just like imagine Eve looking at the apple and the snake was like well this is good and you're gonna be like God and you know the apple probably looked tasty also and she was trusting her feelings rather than actually trusting what God had said because God was said no if you eat that you will surely die but then she was trusting her feelings she was like no but it doesn't look that bad so I'm gonna do it anyways and that's how she got deceived and so that, if that's you in the new age, like you have these beautiful experiences and it doesn't look any bad to you because that's how it was for me. But know that, no, this is actually demonic. And so the Egyptians, they used demonic powers. It was not from God. But there is a spiritual realm indeed. And there is a lot of spiritual power you can gain from these things, even, even from, um, that you can gain from like demonic things. But know that if you use those things, you're going against your creator who actually loves you and wants what's best for you. And he's made everything perfect in Jesus Christ. And he's free. Salvation is free. So, yeah. Be blessed, you guys. And yeah, hopefully I'll make more content. And just send me a message or comment down below if there's anything you want me to explain more about. So, be blessed. Bye.